Welcome to the beautiful St Cuthbert's Church, Corsonside. For the last couple of years, I've been um, supporting a group of local volunteers in um, creating and maintaining wildflower meadow areas in parts of this churchyard. It's it's been really nice working here and getting to know the wildlife a bit better, um, seeing blue tits take up residence in the boxes that the volunteer group built, um, watching the swallows arrive back at the church and even hearing the curlews going over as I did this morning. One of the things we have spotted as well is common lizards and this prompted the group to suggest that they might like to know a bit more about how to survey for reptiles. So there are six species of native reptile in the UK, um, three snakes and three lizards. So there is the smooth snake, um, which is only really found on the south coast. There's the adder, uh, something that will be very familiar to people in Reedsdale. Um, this is a good spot in the country for adders. And the grass snake, um, a specialist of um, wetland areas, a fan of eating frogs. Um, so there are also three species of lizard. There's the common or viparous lizard. Um, there's the sand lizard, which is again only really found on the south coast and on the um, sort of Sefton coast around Merseyside and North Wales. Uh, and then there is the slow worm, which is looks more like a snake but it is a legless lizard. Um, it can blink, snakes can't blink. Some of our UK reptiles are protected in law um, from killing and injury uh, but two of our reptiles have additional protection, the sand lizard and the smooth snake. Um, these are considered rare reptiles and they're also protected from disturbance. So if you were wanting to survey in an area that might have sand lizards or smooth snakes, you would need to get a license for that. Um, up here in Northumberland, um, in Reedsdale, we are likely to find common lizards and adders. Um, we may find slow worms. There are two main ways that we can survey for reptiles. Um, one through direct observation, and we can look for them when they are basking out in the open or under partial cover, um, which gives reasonable detectability on some species. Um, sometimes lizards or adders can be spotted like that, but for, for slow worms, it's, it's not very useful. Um, the other way that we can survey for reptiles is using artificial refugia, um, such as this one here. Uh, this one is made of a piece of roofing material. They can also be made out of corrugated tin or um, carpet tiles or roofing felt. And the, these will heat up differentially to the surrounding environment to make a warm place for them to bask. And so you would look underneath or on top of these refugia um, for basking reptiles. Um, there are some other, often it's useful to use both of these methods together, so not, not just looking at the um, artificial refugia as we go around on a survey, but to also be looking on likely sites um, at the edges and sunny spots at the edges of changes in vegetation, um, little sun traps. So when positioning an artificial refugia, it's good to think about what the sun is doing and where the reptiles are likely to be basking. Choosing a spot where, often on a change in the height of vegetation, on, that, on those margins, that's often a, a good place to look um, because they've, they've then got the cover to retreat to. That's the sort of place they would naturally choose. Um, so when approaching a mat like this one, you'd be looking along the back for things basking on the, on the top of the mat as well as looking underneath for things that are hiding under there. When setting up a reptile survey, 
the with using artificial refugia they need to have been in place for a couple of weeks um, to allow them to settle in into the habitat and for the reptiles to have a chance of finding them and using them as suitable basking spots um, then comes to the day to choose the um, the day in which you're going to do your reptile survey itself um, and there are particular times of year that are better for this so Ten, early in the year when the reptiles are out of hibernation um, but when the weather isn't so hot that it's going to, they're going to be um, as I think of it fully charged too quickly um, they need to warm up by basking so in March April May and into the first part of June are good again in September when the weather starts cooling down again in between whiles um, they don't need to bask for as long and they are reptiles are much more visible when they're basking uh, when it comes to actually going around and surveying the mats there are um, some considerations to ha bear in mind so I think the the reptiles may be basking on top of the mat as well as underneath um, so considering where your shadow is and which direction the sun is coming from is really important as you approach the mat um, because if your shadow were to pass over it um, that might mean that your reptile disappears before you reach it. So we're going to um, head down here to have a look at some of the uh, mats that we've had out for the last couple of weeks and see if anyone is in um, or on any of these artificial refugia. So my shadow is over here and my mat is down there. Um, I'm wearing a bite resistant glove. Um, as we said, adders are very shy, um, but it's good to be cautious because we are in an area that could have adders. So I'm keeping my shadow away from the mat on the approach and I'm watching to see if there's anything on the top. Uh, if I put my foot down, there's a, uh, the reptiles are very sensitive to vibrations, so if there were to be an adder under there, um, it would be aware that something is happening. But there's no one under this mat today. This headstone in front of it is also the sort of thing you might see something basking on. This one's got spiders on, I don't know, Love spiders. Having lifted up your artificial refugia, you do find um, a, a frog, a toad, a lizard, um, a snake. Um, just be aware of putting, how you put your reptile refugia back down um, because these can be quite hot and you don't want to trap an animal and burn it. Um, so give, give your animals a chance to, to get to bury themselves in the vegetation or to, to scuttle off. Um, so that when you put your tile back down, it's not going to squash anyone. Another thing that we can do to establish the presence of reptiles is to look for their sloughed skins. Um, so this is an adder skin. You can still see the zigzag mark, characteristic zigzag markings on its back. And if we were to zoom in really close, we'd see the keel on each of the scales. Um, something which a smooth snake doesn't have. Um, so as reptiles grow, they need to shed their skin and in order to in order for them to grow. And these can be these can sometimes be found sometimes under a refugia, sometimes um, hooked on a piece of vegetation. And depending if you've got a whole skin like this for a snake, you can sometimes uh, sex it by how 
by looking at the length of its tail beyond its vent. Um, but for lizards, they, the skins tend to come off in small pieces. You know, unlike you won't find a whole skin like this. And for slow worms, often it looks like a, it looks like someone's pulled off a sock. It's all scrunched up. Um, but snake skins like this, you'll be able to tell a species from it. Sadly, we didn't find any reptiles today on our survey, but if it's a small population, um, it can take quite a lot of survey effort to establish the, their presence. Rem um, if we wanted to find out more than just presence of, of reptile species and wanted to find out how big the population was, that would require some more surveys. This is just an introduction to UK reptiles and how to survey for them, um, but there are lots of good places to find more information. Frog Life have a really useful survey information sheet available online and your local amphibian and reptile group um, is a really good place to start to find out more about surveying amphibian repti and reptiles and what's going on in your area, as well as information about the species themselves. If you've been inspired by the beautiful St Cuthbert's churchyard, at Corson side and would like to help look after it and find out more about the, the wildlife and the history here, um, please do get in touch with me, Jennifer, at Revitalising Reedsdale. Um, the volunteer group would love to have you involved.